Hey everyone, welcome to tonight's uh, presentation of the Avance commercial embroidery machine. I see some familiar names there on our attendance screen. Can you just raise your hand if you've been to one of these before? If you've been, to, I'm asking because if you've been to more than two, Janice, then we have to start charging you. That's just, it's just the way it works. I'm sorry. Um, we use the same jokes too. Yeah, I do use the same jokes. So, you know, I can't come up with new material every time. Hi, Steve. Um, I do notice that we've got some, uh, some Facebook group members here as well. So I'm going to do my spiel and then I'm going to turn, uh, turn you over to, and I apologize in advance, uh, Don Copeland to, uh, to show you the Avance machine. So let's take a look. Can everybody see the, uh, the screen now? If you are on an iPhone or an iPad, you may experience some issues when I switch back and forth between the computer monitor and the live video. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. The only thing I can tell you is that sometimes it works if you click out of it and then back in. But do let us know because we'll try to do the same thing. Um, what you see in front of you is uh, Custom Apparel Startups, and that is our Facebook group which as I said, some of you are members. We've got more than a thousand people that are in your business or want to be in this business just like you do. Okay, so it's a great place to go for, to go for help, to go and find the, uh, the latest in what we're trying to do. For example, uh, September 11th and 12th in our Tampa, Florida headquarters, we're actually having like a mini trade show where you can come in on a Friday or Saturday and spend time with a salesperson and a technician and talk about the Avance, the Pro Spangled Cans machine, everything that we do. Okay, so uh, definitely take a look at that. Um, we've also got a, uh, a huge YouTube channel with a lot of different videos on it. What I'd like you to do with that is just go there and hit the subscribe button. And that way, whenever we do come out with a new demonstration video or promotional video or even tech support video, then you'll automatically be notified that we have a do we have a video? Okay, Steve says that the last one you watched, uh, you were driving through Tennessee. Okay, Steve, I won't charge you for this one, uh, but the next one you're on the hook. Um, the other thing that we do is we've got the CAS podcast, and this is, CAS stands for Custom Apparel Startups, and that is a great way if, like Steve, you're on a long drive, you can download the podcast, or you can play it live online, and you can listen to us talk about the business. The last episode was about DTG printing with Don Copeland. Before that, we, uh, we did 45 minutes to an hour talking about websites, whether or not you should have one, what, what kind you might want. We did marketing essentials and, and basic business mistakes, things to avoid. So it is a great place to kind of listen to the news that will help you improve your business. And of course, we've got the, uh, the best support site in the industry, along with the best technicians in the industry. And on the support site, there is everything from, from training, there's support videos. As a matter of fact, in some cases, it's, it's, it's magic because if you put in a support request here, sometimes the system will email you a solution to your problem. It might be a link to a video or an FAQ. All right. The next thing I'm going to show you, I hope you've seen this before, is, uh, is the Avance website. And on the Avance website, I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, under the home screen here that people seem to be missing, there's a lot of great, great, great articles that we put a lot of effort into to help educate you on the business. One of my favorites is this 35 uh, embroidery business ideas. Just some place to go if you don't know what to do today or if you're looking at what markets you might want to get into starting your business. Uh, it's a great place to go and just look around and see if you, you can be inspired by that stuff. Um, and, uh, and that is it for me. So now I am going to, uh, to turn it over to the, uh, the effervescent uh, Don Copeland. Don? I'm not sure if effervescent is a compliment, but we'll look you know, it up. Hey, so hey, welcome. As uh, Mark probably said tonight, thank you all for taking time out of your, uh, your schedule sometimes. Some of y'all it's evening, some of y'all it's still uh, late afternoon. We appreciate y'all being here. Uh, I'm going to go through the Avante 1501C commercial embroidery machine. If I'm acting a little weird, we, we actually have the camera in front of the screen. So <laughs> Mark and I are adjusting to this camera that's sitting here. Between he always me. acts weird. There's This is just true. a recent excuse. That's true. I did take my meds beforehand, so we're good. Okay. All right. So this is the Avante 1501C commercial embroidery machine. And I want to move our, actually, as we slide this out of the way, yeah. so you can kind of see it a little bit better right now. Yep. <clears throat> 
So what does it mean? Number one, 15 needle, 15. O1 means single head. C stands for compact. Compact basically means that the machine actually will show outside of the body of the machine. It's nice. It'll fit into a, a typical operation. We sell a lot of these machines to, to, fam, to people who have a home-based business uh, and people who are adding it into an existing shop where they don't have a lot of room. The machine is, and I'm going to have Mark tip a little bit, it is on a stand. If you look down here near the bottom, the stand itself, oh boy, I'm getting seasick. Can you see the casters? A little bit further. There we go. We have casters on the machine right down here, right? So what that means you're able to do is you're able to use this machine, roll it out into your work area where you want to work on it. When you're done, just roll it back into the corner, which is a huge benefit. All right. Another, another thing that you're going to find with the machine is we're going to give you a full set of hoops. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I heard of Mark ask before. How many of you all are already doing embroidery or have done embroidery in the past? If you have, put your hand up in the air, please. Wave it like you just don't care. Okay, if you have no video, hang on for a second. I'm going to click away and click back. As I said in the beginning, and somebody asked if they missed anything, not really, just my important parts. Um, I'm going to click here and click back, and we'll see if we can't get the video to turn on. In particular, if you're on an iPhone or an iPad, you may have some issues with us when we switch back and forth. You can try to exit and then click back. All right. Are you all seeing us now? Off again. It just seemed to be one person that seemed to be having the problem. You may want to try logging off and logging back on. Yeah, that might do it. You might try that. All right, hands. I see a lot of hands. Susan, Alejandro, Brenda. Uh, Brenda's name's familiar. I think I think Brenda just bought a machine from. Oh, there's quite a few of them. Yeah. Looks like there's about there's about 30 of you all online right now, and it looks like about 20% or so of you have done embroidery. So I'm going to kind of address this more to those of you who haven't done embroidery. So if I bore some of you. Ask good questions so that I can yeah. help these other people. You know what? Right? I, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. Um, if you did purchase one of the Avancés from us, that's great. We're glad to have you here. This is not a training. It's strictly a demonstration. Right. So we'll answer questions if we can, but only as they pertain to the whole group. And trust me, you don't want me, me to train you. No, anyway. you don't. That's like Mark trying to sell you something. All right. So anyway, back to our story. So 15-needle compact machine. It's going to come with a full complement of hoops. And in the in the commercial embroidery world, it's very critical to keep the machine sewing. So what you want to do is you want to have two of your critical, two of each size of your critical hoops, so that we have one on the machine sewing, you have one off the machine. You're unhooping it, getting it ready for the next, right? So that as soon as the machine stops, it starts sewing again. Because what, Mark? If it ain't making noise, it ain't making money. And if that it, is probably not plugged in. And it's also not plugged in. That's another good point. So you can have nine, twelve. On the machine, we have a 15 and then a 21 centimeter hoop. That fits right around my head. You're going to get two of each of those. You're also going to get two of 12 inch by 12 inch jacket back, which, uh, which was this one here. Mark must have stolen it right there. That's not a 12 by 12. In Mark's world, that's 12 by 12. Mark's marketing world, that's a 12 by 12. Here's one off of our multi head. It's a 12 by 12 jacket back. It's basically 12 inches by 12 inches. You get two of those. It'll be green. Um, all right. The whites are good with the multis. And then we have the, the monster hoop right here, which is basically 21 by 15, all right, yeah. which you would use to do a jacket back. As you can see back here on the ground behind me, there's a table. And that table actually mounts right in here flush underneath to bear the weight of a heavy item. Like you're doing a heavy jacket, you were doing a horse blanket, maybe you were doing patches. This is actually going to sit right over above it. And if there's any extra weight, it's actually bearing down. So you're not putting a lot of torque on these, these arms as well. So Donna just mentioned three things that are big differences between a professional machine like the Avance and a more consumer machine. And that's the sewing field and the jacket back. Correct. The fact that it comes with hoops and there's two of each. Right. I mean, let's say, for instance, you know, a lot of the times we're talking to people, they're looking at brother and baby lock, which in case you haven't figured yeah. it out yet, yeah. they are Siamese twins. They're, they're you know, yeah. Brothers from a different mother, but they're the same father. The same machine. There's a little bit of electronic differences. Did I say that right? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Just keep Let's moving. just go with it, okay? Um, but they're basically the same machine. When you you go up to the counter and they start ringing and stuff and saying, oh, did you actually want more than one total hoop, right? You end up with $500 to $1,000 in extra hoops, accessories, and whatnot. Before you get to caps. Before you get to the caps. <laughs> Good point. You also get a cap driver for the machine which actually is very quick to put on. As you can see right here, there are basically two screws. You loosen two screws over here, remove the, the actual arms, and these two screws right here 
go right in, and this is your cap driver. You get two cap frames, which allow you to do, which allow you to make a lot of noise. They really do. Right. The cap frames allow you to make right. a lot of noise. These are wide cap frames, which allow you going to do a cap for 270 degrees around the hat. And you're also going to get the hooping gauge, which you see right here, we have a cap frame on. And caps are big money makers for, right. for this, the Avanti. This is a hooping gauge. If you've not done commercial embroidery, that is actually what you allows you to actually frame up the hat just like it would be on the machine. So you can load a hat on. You don't hoop a hat flat like you would a thing on. And this is a hat that's already been hooped up. You're going to get two of those. I can literally sew from here all the way around to here. You get two of those. All that's just standard stuff that's going to come with the machine. On top of that, you're going to get a tool kit that has Virtually every tool you're going to need to do anything on a machine, any screws, any uh, uh, some of the heads in here are hex heads. You're going to have the, the Allen wrenches for those. It's going to have a reciprocator because there are two types of embroiderers. There are embroiderers who have hit a hoop right. and broken their okay. reciprocator, and those who will hit a hoop and break a reciprocator. We include one right along with it. It's included in the package. It's not a pleasant thing to have to change, but at some point you'll have to do it. It's just good to know that all you have to do is go up online and, and look at a quick video and just follow it step for step to replace it, or call and talk to one of our technicians and they'll help you walk through doing that. You're not having to worry about overnight it for a Saturday delivery because you got 500 hats to get done for Monday morning, right? Hey, so, hey Don, we've got a we've got a kind of a basic question. What's the difference between this and a monogram machine? That's a good question because people ask me that all the time. Monogramming is a type of embroidery, all right? right? In fact, when Alan shows you uh, the software here in a few minutes, I'm going to have him show you just real quickly a couple of the monograms that we can do. Embroidery is the big group. Monogramming is a small point of it. Typically, when I hear monogramming from people, what did I what I think of is single color, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be a, a a moderate to high level home machine, or even a six color, or maybe even a six color machine. You know, something that you might throw in a boutique where you're doing uh, maybe some some Vera Bradley type bags, and that's all you're doing is your letter and whatnot. That's what our people would do. But as soon as they start getting demand for it, and, and understand mm -hmm. that in a lot of those operations, you, you think just in that one stead. As soon as you start doing something with embroidery, it's going to expand. And you're going right. to have people wanting bigger things and heavier things and whatnot. So investing the money into a machine that may cost you eight or $9,000 simply to do the, the straight monogramming, it, it's kind of foolish when only for 25% more or so. You can have a full commercial machine with 15 needles 15 on it. 15 needles. So and the benefit of 15 your day. needles, yeah. there's another question right there. Why do I need a 15 needle machine, right? The reason you need a 15 needle machine is because in the heat of battle, you don't want to be spending time changing colors, okay? If I have 15 colors on this machine, very, very seldom, if ever, will most of you ever do a 15 color job or a 16 color job, let's say. But having 15 colors as opposed to nine, six colors on my machine means I'm two and a half times as likely to have the right color already oh, on the machine. Right, right. That's you're huge. So you're not doing changeovers during the business day, especially in a live environment. We have got, people waiting. Got two questions. Okay. Uh, the first one is, is the machine able to embroider on the bill of a cap? No. When you see that, and it's a good question, when you see that that's done, those are actually pre-assembled uh, in embroidery. Uh, typically, they're done over in Asia, typically in China, where they actually embroider on the material, and then they actually assemble the hat together. But, but you could probably do it with a patch kit and a hat press. Absolutely. If you were wanting to do something, you know, the, the really classy ones we see, that we all love, it's like, you know, it's your favorite football team that goes from here and all of a sudden, it's down the hook. Yeah. You're never going to get that right, right, right? But if you wanted to take something, and let's say you wanted to put a logo down on the bill, you know, I've got a hat here. Like, if I wanted to put a logo right down here on this bill, what I could do is actually do a patch kit, a patch from our patch kit from Coleman and Company, and those are heat appliable. All right. Okay. The other question is, I have a lot of SWF aftermarket hoops. Will these work with this machine? Most of them will, yes, because the Avance has multiple. If you if you can zoom in here a little bit, Mark, still playing with the computer. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You can't do that. No, I can't. Here. All right. So you can see right here. Each of these pairs represents a place where I can mount these arms, and I actually have four different positions. And really, realistically, you're going to use three different positions. I think there's 360, 450, and 500 uh, millimeters. Am I right, Alan? Okay. So you have those three different widths of arms that you're able to adjust to. And the indexes on them absolutely work. In some cases, you may have to make slight adjustments on here, depending on what type of aftermarket hoop it is, but it's very easy to do. We have a lot of, obviously, we sold the SWF brand for a ton of years. We have a lot of customers 
who are migrating into the Avancés and they're using all their aftermarket hoops other than some, if you had something for a great big machine, you may not be able to get it on here, your biggest app, oversized hoop, but that's it. Got another question, Don. Would yep. this be good for trade shows? We sell a lot of these at trade shows. <laughs> Me too, right? Uh, would it be good to take to an event or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Absolutely, because of the nature of the machine, unlike, you know, because we're going to get questions about SWFs because we have customers who have SWFs. Yep. Unlike the SWF, where actually the brain was a separate entity, right? With these machines, everything is here and inside of the panel back in here. So this is an independent beast. It does. There's nothing else. You could physically pick this up, put it in the back of your SUV, go to an yeah. event, and not even have to worry about taking the stand, yep. and you're good to go. So it's it 110. Great. You just plug it in. Plug and it in. Turn it's it on 110. You get a lot of questions. It really sounds crazy because people freak out when they look at these machines. Or, I got to have special electric in. I'm going to turn this and show you. Try try not to show you Mark too much. Oh my This God. big thing behind Mark, this forehead machine. Yeah. It's like six amps. All right. It's like a six amps machine, and that's that that you can regularly literally if you didn't. That's 220. You could plug it into the same plug that you would use for your dryer, basically at your house. Not that I would suggest putting this in the laundry room, <laughs> right. but they don't draw a huge amount of electricity. A lot more efficient motors than they used to have. They use a lot of capacitors to help bring things up when yeah. they power up, so it's really powerful. Any, any problem with putting it in a permanent store in a flea market? Uh, obviously, Steve, you're being able to see us now, right? That's good. Um, no, not at all. I mean, obviously, other than vandalism and theft. Right. Um, <laughs> but no, not a lot. In fact, we have a number of customers. We're in Florida. So flea markets are a year-round thing yeah. in Florida, yeah. and we have customers to do there. And most of the flea markets down here are not a, an enclosed building. A lot of them are just awnings and whatnot, yeah. where they may have a or the cheap closes. tables are outside. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wouldn't say sit it out on the table outside on a regular basis every Saturday, but certainly if you have one of the stall type of. Uh, flea markets. We have people do that all over the place here in Florida. Uh, Steve's in Fort Myers. Oh, okay, good. So you you know what the flea markets are like down here. I mean, there's a lot of them here. Wagon Wheel and the ones up here in Tampa Bay area that have people that are, there's actually full-time embroiderers in those places. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, any other questions while we're kind of off track? <laughs> no. We're kind of on track, but off track, yeah, right? No, no, no. All right, ahead. awesome. Basics of the machine, pretty straightforward, but we got to cover them again because a lot of folks are new to this to the, the embroidery market. The machine has what are called rotary brake, the thread brake detectors. The thread comes down, this loops around this, this wheel right here that spins. When thread is being pulled through, that wheel is going to be spinning. When that wheel stops spinning, it indicates to the machine that there's some kind of error state. The, the most common one is a thread break, which happens. However, you have a bobbin down underneath it here. The bobbin can run out. Uh, bobbins have been known to, to lock back on themselves and actually, you know, basically get like a bird's nest in them or something like that. If that happens, what's going to happen over the needle breaks or whatever, if something like that, or you run out of thread, by the way, if you run out of thread, you should be shot. <laughs> These spools are 5,000 meters, okay? As soon as you can start to see the core of the cone, throw it away. There's like two and a half cents worth of thread on yeah. it, okay? Um, but if that stops spinning, what's going to happen is the machine's going to stop. It doesn't know what the error is. It just knows that that thread brake detector is not spinning. So what you do is you come, there's this light right here that's red, it will be red and flashing, and that'll tell you that it's an error state. It's also a good indicator too. If you're working in a shop where you have other things going on, you can kind of look over and tell if your embroidery machine is moving, but maybe you can't hear it. So what, what you can do is if you look over and you don't see a red light here, you know the machine's done. If you yeah. see a red light, you know, you get a thread break, bobbing out or something you like that. You just fix it and hit the start button and it picks up right up. Bingo. Right so what you do is you come back, fix it, fix your thread break, replace your bobbin, whatever you had to do. You hit this the stop button and the stop button will actually back you up a stitch at a time as you hold it. It starts progressively going back faster. And generally what you'll do is you'll back up five to ten stitches, restart the sewing and go right over and, top of it. And that's another question that we get from more uh, consumer embroiderers is, will it do thread changes by itself and how does it Absolutely. I mean, it, it's auto thread change. Um, it's going to have upper and lower uh, thread break. So if you lose bobbin, it's going to detect that, not just to get an upper thread thread break. It is going to do auto trimming, auto color change, yeah. all those things that for the, the typical home embroiderer, you are the auto color yeah, change, yeah. right? And you don't you don't do the trimming automatically. You take a pair of scissors and trim. So all those little tools that you have in that home software you've been using 
that you now just have a jump stitch there to go to another college. When you go from one to another, you're going to be able to do with the machine. Okay. How much does the bobbin hold? I don't. I don't know. It's a number size eleven bobbin, right, Alan? Yeah, it's a it's a nickel. It's, 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 it's a size eleven bobbin. So it's a standard bobbin, just like you would use in your home machine or your even in your home sewing machine. But uh, you'll use Col Coleman and Company bobbins, and they're they're a smoking deal. They're great. 132 um, meters. About 55 to 60. Meters. Meters. We had 133 meters, yes. which which is roughly 150 yards, right? That's what those of you here in Maine. Yeah, it's no. funny that. Yeah, it's about 10 percent, huh? Okay, yeah, so yeah, not meters. Does it have meters. automatic tension? Automatic tension, no. And I'll tell you why. It's meaningless. Automatic tensioning. Once you set up a machine, all right, to sew with a certain type of thread, you don't need to be messing with tension. All right. When you start playing around with that, if you don't remember exactly where you if you played with something you thought you tweaked it just right for a certain design, you're never going to get it back to there. Now, a lot of the, it is tensioning. You have your free tensioners up here, and then you have your tensioning knobs right here. The machine comes to you. It's already been sewn out. Typically has about 300,000 stitches on it. All right. Okay. And these are properly tensioned for the polyester thread, the royal thread that comes with the machine. Don't forget to talk about memory level. All right. I, I don't, I forgot. Number of stitches. Oh, that, that memory. Okay. Um, but it's already going to be pre-tensioned for this. Now, if you're doing specialty threads, maybe you're doing a photochromatic thread, maybe you're doing, uh, you know, metallic thread. A lot of folks will dedicate a needle, needle 15, let's say, or needle 14 and 15, to specialty threads and pre-tension for that. You don't want to be changing tensions all the time unless you're continually changing thread type. And, and we want you to buy thread from us. However, don't mix threads on a machine. If you are hooked on Madeira, you're hooked on another brand of thread, and you've been doing it for years, stay with that thread brand if you want, but make sure you tension the machine all up. Don't mix and match them because you'll never get your thread Of course, right. you will be loaded up with uh, 15 1,000 meter cones of... Uh, Except because I like you guys so much, <laughs> I'm actually going to give you the 5,000 meter cones that I said earlier. Wow. Yeah, there we okay. go. There we go. Um, You're so we generous. Actually, we, were like talk, we were talking about memory, right? Yeah. And Mark's lack of it sometimes. The machine will hold 2 million stitches or up to 200 designs. So what does that mean? Those jobs that you do on a regular basis, you're going to save in memory. And the cool thing about the machine is, is when I program it, when I load designs in here, one of the things it's going to have me do is go ahead and set my sew sequence. And what a sew sequence is, is, you know, an, an embroidery design. When Alan does the one here in a minute on the, the software, you'll see it's, it's colorblind. So when I load a design into the machine, it just knows there's a color change, a color change, a color change, a color change. It doesn't know what that means. It, it's just going to sew. I have to tell the head where it lines up at. So I'm going to go ahead and load up a design, and I'm, I'll set my sew sequence where it might be needle 4, needle 11, needle 7, and needle 1. And when I save that into the design into memory, next time I pull it up, it's going to have that same sew sequence. So if you have a pretty standard set of threads that you keep on the majority of the machine, all those designs, are, you won't even have to worry about changing. Yeah, you just load it up and next do time that, you pull it back up. Next, next year, the school wants another set of jerseys, and you just pull up the design and go. You know, you're right. We are talking, somebody asked a question here. We, we are talking a lot about loading designs into the machine. How do you do it? There's two ways to do it. There's a USB thumb drive. There's also the ability to hook the machine up via Ethernet. So there's two different ways to send your designs yep. over to the machine. Floppy drives are dead. Hate to break that to some of y'all bad oh, machines for here. Floppy drives are dead. And one of these little thumb drives that you get now, four gig, I challenge you to fill it. You'll never, you never You'll will. You'll never will Not fill with it. The designs are Petite. We have any? Oh, looks like we have a question. Is it wireless? It is not a wireless. Bar. I, I don't question that you probably could set up a wireless if you wanted to, but certainly the USB is. We call that a sneaker network. You know, you put it on your thumb drive and you get on, you put on your sneakers and walk over. But it is not a wireless internally. But I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to set up a wireless connection to it from your in, on your network. Or They're not big you files want? you're sending you, but. Not a big because you still got to come over to the machine and load up the yeah. design and do yeah. what. But you certainly it can connect via Ethernet. So if you have a wireless connection, you can put into an Ethernet connector. You can you can do it wireless. Okay. Other question? Cool. All right. So one of the things what we've done here is we actually been load up. We get a lot of questions about puff. I'm going to show you a, a hat here that we did. Yeah, I don't need your phone, Alan. I need the, the 3D hat. embroidery. <laughs> 3D embroidery. We get a lot of questions about it. We're actually just going to do it on some flat material here. But this is what we're talking about, 3D embroidery. If you can see that, right, that's got some dimension to it, some depth. 
to this. And what you do is you actually, this is a design, this actually comes from a, a font package that Coleman and Company sells. It's called Puffy Fonts. And what it has is it's going to show a white base, and then we're going to lay down the puff material, which is this. And I think Coleman sells it. I'm looking over at it. I think it's in 13 or 14, 14 yeah. different colors. This material, and you can play with it. You can put two layers on it if you want. And you basically are going to lay this down. We're going to sew through it. This is a kind of a foam type material. Once we're done, we would take this. If you're a screen printer, you throw this in your belt dryer. Boom. And it's going to tighten it right up. If you're uh, just working from home, from home or you don't have a screen printing dryer, take a heat gun or a blow dryer just to tighten everything up. And you try to use a thread, a, a uh, poly. backing, poly backing. It's similar to the color of the thread you're going to be sewing. That way, if there are any gaps, it's not as noticeable. So we've loaded up the design. Alan is actually, I think you've already traced it, right? We've already loaded up. So now this is the hard part. It's the part that the salesman's qualified to do. Okay. Close, close your eyes because I'm going to move this closer so you can take a look at what this thing looks like sewing out. Do what I want to do. I'm going to turn off the light. So it's yeah, that'll be better. Other side. There you go. Now you can Thank see it's you. open. We're actually sewing down the red. So it's done an outline, a running stitch outline of the letter C. It's going to come back here. It's actually going to do a satin stitch all the way around. And then once it's done, it'll do the letter D, and we'll come back and we'll actually lay the puff material down. If you've got a question just popped up, let me look at it real quick. It is very quiet. Yes, Steve, it actually is. Um, what? I, it, it's, you know, maybe not to us because it's, it's ready, but it is overall a very quiet machine. And that's a huge benefit for somebody who's, you know, a lot of our customers are home-based businesses. Yeah. And, you know, you live in a townhome, you live in an apartment or something like that. You can run this on a, you know, I wouldn't suggest if you're on the third floor and that you run it on your kitchen wooden floor <laughs> on the wheel. But you take this, remember, this is just sitting on the caster. You sit, sincerely, if you're going to do this, you can, you put large you know foam pad I got a carpet pad down underneath of it. It's a very quiet machine. It's easy to operate. If we had an SW up in here, uh, Barbara's having trouble hearing. So we can oh, that oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm right here. I'm wanting you to see this. Um, but back to you can certainly set this up and run this in the home without it being too loud. I uh, had a friend who had Tajimas. Tajimas. tajimas and at times you couldn't hold a conversation. I mean, they are, and you know, and not to bash the Tajimas. They're a good machine. They're a good machine. And they were probably older machines. And the technology, that's one of the technology changes we've seen over the last 10 years or so in embroidery machines is da noise dampening on the machine. So a lot of the machines have picked up, you know, some of the early happy machines sounded like you were shooting a machine gun into a metal plate. They were very loud, but the machines have definitely gotten a lot quieter. And, you know, they may have been running a forehead or, or so as well. Another thing is, is comparing this to a home machine, right? As you can see, even when I hold it, it gets a little quieter. It's a heavier machine, and mass absorbs vibration, sound is vibration. So the machine is going to be quieter than a home machine. It might only weigh 70 pounds, all right? We're getting close here. Any other questions while we're letting the machine sew through this? By the way, we're sewing this at 800 stitches per minute which is about typical of what you would sew a flat, like on a golf shirt or something like that. If we were doing this on a hat, we'd probably be running around closer to 700. Um, but the machine sews at a pretty good about, say, 75% of potential of the full speed of the machine. Yeah, I keep forgetting the camera's out there. I'm trying not to stand in front of it. I'm trying to stay out of the way. That's me. I see me. That's all me. There. Here. Is that better? There we go. You guys can't see how I'm leaning across to talk to you while we're doing this. I see another question. Mark keeps walking away because his beard's over there. And, and no, I'm kidding. No, no, it, we're, no, not no we're not the muting the, the sound of the machine. I tried it with Don for about two years now, and muting just does not work. Wow. I mean, you can hear, I'm literally, I'm right here. This is the machine. My hand is hitting the machine, right? And that, that's how close the microphone is. That's why Mark keeps yelling at me to get close. Because as I get behind us, it's a directional microphone. This is actually a directional microphone that's pointing down right here towards the machine. Mark's actually taking a picture. He's going to put it up on the Facebook so you'll see. All right. So, 
right? So we've actually stopped. We've got it set up. What Alan did is he programmed the machine. We call it applique mode, which means basically stop after color changes. So we've shown these two colors, right? And now before we do a color change, we're just going to lay this in here. And since this isn't a hat, it really doesn't matter. This isn't going anywhere. We're going to sew, and it's going to start sewing. It's going to sew right through it. So I hit the start button. It's going to do the color change. I'm going to go to the next color, which I'm assuming Alan made black. <laughs> okay, good. So it matches the material. It's actually going to start sewing through the, the black. And that, that puppy's not moving now because it's actually been sewn down. And now it's going to come back, and it's actually going to do a satin fill in there. And the beauty of this is when you use the font pack that we sell at Coleman & Company for doing this, this is something you don't have to learn right away on digitizing. I think there's 10 or maybe 12 fonts in there that are already pre-digitized to do uh, a puff. A puff is a little bit longer satin stitch. So, and you know, you can learn how to do it yourself, but right out of the box, if you've got to do hats with lettering on them, you buy that package from Coleman & Company and immediately along with the puff material, immediately you're now going to be being able to do puff on hats. Most of your sports team will actually use 3D puff foam on their hats. Uh, so if you have a high school team or a college team or even a, um, a, a, a parochial school team, you can actually do the 3D puff for their sports yeah. team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can give these kids make it look like the pro hats. That's awesome. Uh, Larry asked about, do they hold their value like a Tajima? I mean, it's hard to say. Tajima's been at it for a number of years. But it is a commercial machine, and commercial machines do hold their value. And it holds 100% value for two years. Yeah, when you're looking at trading up, let's say you you're, you remember the, the uh, when I showed you the machine that took was a 5-amp machine behind Mark, the great big forehead? Yeah. If you wanted to jump up to that machine in two years, we're going to give you 100% of what you pay for this towards that right away. It doesn't hold any value be any better than that. They don't appreciate in value, but they certainly hold their value for that. Does it also use the cut work needle? Wedge point, yes. Yes, wedge point. That's why I've got Alan here. I would have just said, I don't know. Um, and Rhea, Rhea, is it Risa? Was wanting to know if you can embroider on shoe, uh, sneakers and cleats. There is an aftermarket attachment we can get. It's not cheap, but it's got a clamp that actually holds and allow you to stitch on the side of a shoe. Um, the, 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 the example you typically see is a soccer cleat. So yes, you can get that attachment. I want to say it's like fifteen or eighteen hundred dollars. It's a pretty pricey attachment. You certainly can do it. But with what you would save on an Avance over most of our competition in this market, it's almost like getting it for free. We're getting close here. All right, I'm going to uh, pull, pull the camera back. We're going to pull back a little bit while it's finishing up. Close your eyes, everyone. Oh, seasick time. That's better. All right. As you hear, if you guys are hearing a machine sew, it sounds like it's sewing at different speeds because it is. The machines have a smart technology that they keep track of where where they're going in the future. They're kind of looking ahead, and they're going to speed up and slow down relative to that. Where it's getting into a compromising situation, it'll slow down. And it's coming to the end of something. It's going to ramp down. It's going to ramp up. So if you, it's not like you put it on 800 and it's immediately at 800. It's going to go through that design. It's going to speed up where, to the full 800 where it can. It's going to slow down where it needs to slow down so you don't get thread breaks or needle breaks. Got a uh, question about, so two questions about maintenance. Are there service technicians that maintenance is needed? Yes. We have tech that cover the entire country. Not only that, you, you're going to have guys like Alan, who you'll meet here in a bit, who are actually on the phone. You can go onto our support website that Mark showed you a while ago, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you also can uh, email or Submit a support call right from there for help. Uh, you will rarely need it though. You're right. On um, single head, yeah. you're just, it's just not going to happen. You're going to find the training is so complete that there's very rarely, usually it's, it's, you just didn't look it up in the manual type of questions. And, you know, there's not a whole lot, they, they don't break. I hate, you know, I'm going to say that everyone is going to buy one, all of you will have a fleet freak and it'll break. But commercial single head and embroidery machines on it from a violent company like we are, it's not something we lose sleep about. They're, they work very well. It's more, getting the operational stuff down, learning how to change things. Uh, Steve asked, what are the monthly maintenance costs? Very negligible. You're going to use oil. You're going to oil the hook of the machine every four hours. You're going to move a lot of, oil a lot of the other moving parts maybe once a day. All right? And, you know, probably the highest cost you've got is going to be the compressed air that you will buy to blow out the area around the bobbin. There's not a lot. You know, when you do greasing on these machines, it's very minimal. One of the cool things about these is, 
actually the, the arm, the pole pantograph mounted in from the side. Um, one of the downsides of the SWF was they had a slit right here where the arms went down into it, which really looked cool, but, you know, but what happened was is that there's a lot of cotton dust and whatnot floating around. It would get down into there and it would gum up eventually and you'd have to grease the machine more frequently. You don't have to do that with this machine. So there's some huge benefits to it that way. But there's not a lot, you know, it's not like a printer or something like that. If you don't use this machine for two weeks, it doesn't care, right? You come back, you hit it with some oil, you blow it out, you start it up, you start sewing, you're good to go again, okay? We're almost there, guys. We're getting close. We're getting close. And what we'll do is after this, uh, is uh, I want to have Alan show you the Stitcher uh, uh, Liberty software, which is our auto digitizing software we provide. It also has a ton of fonts, and there's 60 fonts in it. We have 20 uh, monogram in format, 360 fill routines. It's just you know a full-blown digitizing package that will allow you to start doing your own digitizing as soon as you're comfortable with it. I don't like to oversell digitizing software. It's a great digitizing software, but it can't make up for experience. You still have to understand embroidery a really good digitizer. But you do get trained on that too. We do training on that. Anything that you get, we give you training. We understand completely that the value, I'm trying to get a mouth left-handed. There we go. Um, I'll get right to you on that question. The, we, we do training on the hardware. We do training on the software. Guys like Alan, Sean, or Tex you're going to call into are not just trained geeks. And I don't mean that in the wrong way. They're not just technicians. They all have practical experience in the embroidery industry. You can call in and talk to Alan, and Alan's going to you say, hey, I'm trying to do this on this type of material. Alan's probably done it. He's probably done it more than 42 times. So he can give you advice yeah. on how to do that, not just how to run the machine. All right. Uh, Richard asked about, we're doing pockets. Um, there is an aftermarket tool that is called Bash Frames that they make for a lot of embroidery machines. Most people buy the 7 and one seven different pockets. And, and rounded things, you have pant legs, long sleeve, inside of pockets in different sizes. They use an adhesive back backing. You slide it inside, you press it, and then you can actually sew inside of it. We've got two good questions. Uh, Larry says he's got a friend that says only Tajima was right for starting a business. Looks like this one runs as well. My question would be, after two or three years, will I get the same quality? Yeah, the machines don't water out if that's what you're asking. Yeah, they don't wear out. We, we've or... been... And I'll, let me throw this back at your friend. Your friend obviously has got a lot of experience. The folks that I work for, the people who write my check, Nicole, on this side, <laughs> Nicole and Cole Desi is Scott Coleman and his family. They've been in the embroidery industry in Tampa for almost 50 years now. All right. They still maintain an operation that does name tapes uh, and a lot of other stuff. But the company's actually named Uniform Name Tape. The service is McDill Air Force Base and CENTCOM here. They wouldn't put their name on a machine that would trash their name three years down the road or two down, years down the road, four years down the road. Uh, we did a lot of research and working with manufacturers to find the right manufacturer to put our name on a machine. And with this, there's a five-year major components warranty on it. So I don't expect that you're going to see anything inside of a time frame that you would expect from a machine. In fairness, this machine is about 50% cheaper, 40 to 50% cheaper than a similar package. You know, if you're paying... $17,000 or so, you're looking at around 11. So it's not quite 50, but it's 40% cheaper than a Tsujima. Is it going to sew as well as a Tsujima? Absolutely. What's it going to look like 25 years from now? Hard to tell. But the reality check of it is 40% out the door. You can afford to do this. In fact, for what you would pay for a, a, a full-blown Tsujima package, you can buy two of these machines. Yeah, That's absolutely. a huge difference. We're about and always have been about giving you the most machine for the dollar. We did the same thing with SWF when we started. SWF wasn't on the roadmap, okay? Right. Great. People ask us, you know, were we stressed about losing SWF? No, because Cold Desi, which was then SWF East and the Coleman family, put SWF on the map and where they were at. It wasn't the other way around. And it's the same thing then. The company, the Avance brand has just skyrocketed in the last year because of the, the support and the service and the dedication that the family here has to the industry. And, and let, me, let me tell you another advantage that we have over a company like a Tajima or whoever you might buy that from is that a large percentage of our customers come back and buy other things from us. We don't just sell them right. embroidery machines. Right, exactly. We have, you know, you'll see we do webinars on our DTG. We do webinars on our CAMs, our Pro Spangle. Um, Steve, again, a good question about Action Illustrated. Action Illustrated, I believe most of those are vector files. Bring those vector files in. 
And can you digitize it? Yes. Yeah. You still have to understand how to digitize and understand how to deal with because you have pulling going on when you have stitches. But absolutely, those are great files because they're really well digitized. Lynn's got two questions. Where does the training take place? Here at my shop, or do I have to travel there? Um, Live online. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. It's your choice. We offer training three ways for free. Uh, for those of you who may feel bold, we have self-paced online training. Um, we also do offer classroom training here in Tampa and at our office in New Jersey. But the most, by far and away, the most broad number of our customers, probably 80% plus of our customers, go through the training, go through our live online training, which, yes, is in your computer, right? It means on your, on your computer, in your office, on your machine, all right? Uh, where do I, where are these machines made? The machines are assembled in China from Chinese, Japanese, and German, German components. Parts. Right. Just like a Tajima. <laughs> right. I said that out loud. Um, do you have people that can do digitizing? We can, yes, absolutely. In fact, Barbara, most people are going to do that in the early stages. That's how you learn to digitize. Yeah. You get a good digitizer, have them do the job. Periodically take a job you've sent to the digitizer. Digitize it yourself and then compare your work when they come back. And you find out, why did he do it in 11,000 stitches? I took 12 four. Why did I break threads here every time he didn't? Why does my point look rounded right. off his is sharp? And that's a quick way to do it. Don Speaking Whitworth, of digitizing. Yeah, yeah, we're eating up our time. Do you want to show them that puff? Do you want to rip that off and show it to them before we move yep. on to uh, the demonstration? And then By we'll... the way, hey, guys, the fact that this is taking long, this is, this is on you. You guys are asking some great questions tonight. All right? So what I just did is I just pulled that out right there. You can see DC, my initials. Interesting. All right? Of course, Mr. Coleman of Cole Desi might yeah. say this. And here we go. This is our 3D puff embroidery. Kind of hard to see, but if you turn it this way, you can see right there yeah. the dimensionality cool. of that. And it, it, it is tight, really nice and tight. And what I said, what you would do at this point, you would hit it with a heat source of some kind, either a heat gun, a belt dryer, or a, a, a blow dryer for a while. <laughs> and right. it'll tighten that up. It, the, Threads polyester is going to tighten up as well as the material underneath it. It's all going to tighten up. So anything that might be sticking out is going to suck in. And this is going to look just like that Yankees hat that you see everybody wearing around. Well, while I uh, while I switch over to the software, maybe you want to take uh, Rice's last uh, last question. Then. How does it compare to Ricoma and Melco? Melco is a completely different duck. Um, the, Rico the Ricoma machine is a good machine. They, they have a, a lot of different models, so I don't know which one you're specifically looking at. The biggest thing that separates us from everybody, um, but especially those two brands, is the, the support and service that you get. Uh, Melco is infamous for using a very limited number of real people that work for the company. They're always sending their customers out to train people, right? Uh, and uh, Ricoma just has a very tiny operation down in, down in Miami, Florida, down there, where they offer training. In fact, Typically, I only run into those people in South Florida that are looking at them simply because of the locality. And I actually had a customer who bought one, didn't listen to me about it, had never done embroidery before, and was regretting life. She did it. She saved herself about $1,500. She's already had the machine for two months and has not made any money with it yet because their training is not full and complete. It's very basic glued together type of training that they do on the web. And she hasn't been able to get in and get into a class. All right. So are you guys seeing the screen right now with the software? It's hard to tell because he closed it. You did so switch over. Okay, great. So I'm going to have Alan go through real quick. This is our Stitch Era Liberty software. This is the package that your salesperson, when you talk to them, should be making every effort to convince you to use because it is, for a relatively small investment of 800 bucks, a great tool to allow you to address things. So Alan, let's, uh, obviously, there's a lot of questions I think folks have had about auto digitizing. You want to go ahead and uh, show us a little bit of uh, auto digitizing? Sure. Gas is uh, without gas, a car becomes a great paperweight in the in the driveway or the garage. And without great comparable software, it makes this machine actually a nice paperweight sitting in your house. So what we're going to show you is the many many different myriads of which we can actually create designs, uh, both automatically, manually uh, for your embroidered machine. Now there's going to be three different types of di of digitizers out there. One that does monogramming primarily, one that does actually uh, lettering for clip art images and maybe a corporate logo, and then some that will actually do more ornate uh, designing 
uh, and we'll do all three right here today. So I'm going to cover the first thing is monogramming. For those that are doing monogramming, you see monogramming's on the collar of a, of, of a, uh, a total neck for the sports teams, maybe on a cuff link or maybe on a bag or even a small purse. In the, uh, in, in the embroidery software, Stitcher Liberty, we do have a monogramming package that comes with it. And the way, way it works is when you click on it, you first got to select the template in which you want to use. Now, here we have some single uh, font styles right here, uh, font styles with some different motifs here. You got a, a, a crest here with, a, with, with the, with the uh, monogram inside, different crests there. You have decorative uh, script type uh, monograms. Then you go down to the two letter styles. And you have the same combination of motif, crest, and two letters. Then you go to the three letters. Now, the ones that are locked are not free. They actually come and are purchasable, and usually uh, they are, they're actually discounted with quantity. And you can see there's some here, but you really don't have to use them. I'm going to show you some nice techniques that you can utilize. Click on that for just a second. Let me try to show you. Uh, just give us one second here. We hid part of the uh, <laughs> the software for the uh, webinar. We're hoping you guys are all still there. There it is. We do have some questions. That's what we wanted to see. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Is the software included with the price? It is very close to that at the $11,000 price, Larry. It would be um, typically with the package we're running right now, we are recording this video. So it, if you're listening to this, you know, a year from now, um, too bad on the pricing. Uh, basically, you're typically looking at about $11,300 with the digitizing software plus whatever your shipping charges are, which for most of the continental United States is between about $420 and 550 bucks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick monogram. We'll do a two-letter monogram. I'll choose the, uh, the, the crest. And then we want to put our characters in here. Since it's a two-letter uh, uh, two-letter monogram, we'll just put uh, Coldessi in there, CD. And then once we hit enter, boom, the design comes right in just like that. We do have a full 3D mode so we can see what it looks like. And we have full control over the style of stitches that we're using. You can see that this crest actually has a satin stitch and the fill inside is a cross stitch pattern. And then we can actually have a 3D puff foam here. We can actually just do a satin stitch. If I click on the object, okay, we can actually change different aspects about it by going to Object Manager. And you can see it's a cross-stitch pattern. Now, I could change that cross-stitch pattern to anything I want. I'm going to change it to a pattern fill. And boom, now we have a pattern stitch design. We can even change the color of that. Let's make it a teal bat. Let's make it a teal color. So I'm going to click on the area pattern, and I'll change it to the teal color. We could change the direction of stitches that uh, the direction of the stitches go to get a different fill. We could also change the different um, uh, fill pattern. Let me just go back in the object manager here, and I'll go to the pattern stitch. And the object inspector, we can see right now we're on the, the default style. You do get, um, how many pattern fills do you get with this software? I believe it's 360. 360 pattern fills. We have math patterns, uh, where different, different types of fill here. We have creative patterns. You see the locks on them. Those are actually additional fills that you can buy. And you see some of them are actually fills that actually have a satin stitch on top of them. I yep. forget where those are. They actually, so you have a fill pattern in the back and a satin stitch on top. You of have it. Man manual, it's more of like a needle out type pattern fill. And then you have combined patterns where it takes a motif image and actually embeds it into right. the fill pattern, which is really nice. Like yeah, there I, you go. If I want to choose something like uh, PTX 0081. My favorite. I love old PTX 0081. And you'll see what that does. You nice. see now our, our we have a nice pattern fill. We can actually change the other parts of this design. We can click on the uh, we'll click on the object manager again, and we'll go to the section C. And let's see this this one here. And let me just comp stitch right there. It is. And I'm going to change the color to maroon. And we got to choose all three things here. So we'll hold my shift key down, and then we'll change it to uh, maroon. There you go. And then we'll go to section pack number four to select it, and we can make that maroon, and we can actually make it pink. We can, <gasps> you have full control over the entire uh, design uh, in this monogram. Uh, the stitch count actually is 9,364 stitches. When you do shrink the design down, the stitches do decrease with you. Yeah, for those of you all who aren't familiar with embroidery, uh, there's two types of files you basically are to deal with when you deal with a software like this. You're going to have what Alan was just working on would have been what would be called a DSG file, a design yes. file. Mm -hmm. That's something that's why you could scale it. 
when we go to feed it to the machine, it's, the software will actually generate a DST file. So if you've got a design you work with for a customer, you will digitize a nice logo, you certainly want to make sure you save your DSG file mm -hmm. because you may need to put it out for a shirt or a hat, and then they may want it on a jacket back. Yeah. And if you've only got it in a DST file, there's not a whole lot you can do to scale up or scale down a DST file because it doesn't really change the number of stitches. There are some packages out there on the market you can do that will add and subtract stitches, but they aren't going to allow you to triple the size of a design and give you good results. So what Alan's working with now would be a DSG, and then ultimately when he's done, to save that, and then he'll output it. Sorry, I didn't mean to step over. Sometimes, right. sometimes we get start showing this stuff, and we assume you guys know all this stuff. So another way we can actually do embellishments is that this software is the only software of its kind that actually has an already set motifs. And these motifs right. are actually decorative patterns that you can add to any kind of tablecloth or maybe a napkin setting. Uh, but you can also use these for your with your monogramming. Okay, as you saw in the monogramming, you a lot of the monograms were actually locked off, but they had these decorative motifs that were behind it. See, we have banner fills. Um, I can actually take, uh, let's, let's go ahead and take this guy right over here, drag and drop him in. And boom, it stitches already. So I'm going to rotate this on so I have a, a diamond, and that's just holding my control button. And now what we can do is now we can go back to our monogram. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this uh, decorative a here. I'm just going to go ahead and do the letter A for myself. I'm Alan. So boom, there it is. I'm going to bring this right in, shrink it down. I'm going to hold my shift key down, grab any one of these corners, shrink it in. And As you can tell, around. Alan is great with the software, but his ideas of color matching, woo, they are out there. <laughs> well, I mean, we can actually do a lot of things. We, we can choose all the red areas and convert them to any colors we want. We have full control over the design at this point. That's some creative uh, uh, embellishments that you can do automatically within the software using the simple lettering program. Um, there's another thing I do want to show you about the lettering. The lettering software does have pre-digitized fonts that you can choose. There are fonts that are styles that, are, that work great between anything less than uh, uh, three quarters of a millimeter, I mean a half of, a half of an inch. Uh, lettering that works great with uh, up from a, almost a quarter inch all the way up to three quarters of an inch and even higher. And these fonts are right here. Another thing that we do have is the ability to convert the true type fonts that are in your Windows font folder into embroidery. So these are the fonts that are actually in this uh, computer, and we can use these to convert them to embroidery. I wouldn't suggest using these fonts all the time. No, but, but they're, they're, they're matching great go-to. They're yeah, great go-to. Yeah, exactly. Great go-to fonts to actually get quick, quick land. Like this Lucida uh, calligraphy is one I use all the time. Basically, I'll just bold it. I'll choose the fight of the height of the, the 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 height of the font. We'll just do a half inch. Type in what we want to say here. We even have a spell checker. And there it is. So <laughs> I knew I. He did that on purpose, y'all. So that's a nice thing. You have a character map shows you the characters that are available in your font library. You don't have to go back in the Windows folder to find out. I'm going to hit the Enter button. The font's going to come right into the screen, just like that. We have kerning controls like the space between letters. Decreasing this number actually brings the letters closer together or further apart. We also have full control over where the letters line up. You can see these grips that are on the bottom, in the middle, and on the top. These actually allow me to move that letter closer to any other part of the design that I need to. The one at the middle actually moves it up and down on its plane, and the one on the upper right-hand corner enlarges that letter. So you have full control over your font layout. Why don't we check and see real quick if we have any questions here real quick, Alan. Uh, yes, we do. Click this one right there. There we go. Um, Are the lock patterns uh, not included with the purchase of the machine? That's correct. correct. That's yeah, you can buy those in packages, Alejandro. Will the machine automatically cut the jump stitches yes, if there will. is a trim there? Now, sure these jump set stitches you see right here, and that's one thing that Alan will show you. In fact, when we come right back, I'll show you why are those jump stitches there and how can you separate them. Uh, is there an installation charge, initial one-side training when it it arrives. The machine will come to you already set up. Literally, Alan or one of the other techs has sewn this machine out up to 300,000 stitches. Mm -hmm. All you have to do when the machine arrives is to build the stand, which we have a video online for, which takes 20 minutes, and you have to raise the thread rack up because it tel telescopes, and then there's actually thread all the way through the system because the guys sew the machines out, they trim trim the thread and leave it, you tie off and pull through. Wait, so, And there is a great video on actually unboxing your machine. Oh yeah, we even have, yeah, I mean literally, there's a, the whole thing is, is all on video now. 
Uh, last question. It says the software automatically adjusts the density of stitches after you change the size. Yes, it yeah. automatically does that. If I increase the size of this this text calligraphy, of course, it's going to add the stitches that I need. It's also going to add a little bit more pull compensation automatically because of the uh, the thickness of the font when I bolted it. Uh, and when I shrink it down, also the stitches also decrease as well. So, so Alan, this is torquing me off. I'm looking at this and I see this this thing that looks like the L is lassoing the next L. How am I going to take care of that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my on my on my text right here. It's selected. And what we do have, we have the commands right here. Where to do the trim at? We okay. can do the trim at letters, and boom, now the trim is already there. We also can set lock stitches at each letter too, which I would recommend. Okay. We can also change the different. Um, uh, the the way that this text is laying out you have there's not a, 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 a image that you cannot go around if I click on this and I go to a range you can see that we could upper arch this and I'll just grab this corner and boom we push it up we actually could actually squeeze it together we could exchange uh, change the size of the font we could actually rotate this around on the assumed circle of the of the of the curve of the arch we could extrude in to any any kind of object if you're having a tent sale, we can actually place this thing right into a tent. There we go. And remember, all these points are tent modified. Sale. Yeah, there we go. We can modify this any way we want. Now we have this uh, calligraphy going around something that maybe assumed the shape that's above it. Just because you have the power to do it doesn't always mean it's good, though, as you can see from that one. You got that. <laughs> we could put it in a banner just That's like awesome that. there. I like that one. Uh, you know, for for those Lent, for people that enjoy Lent, there you go. You put it right into so, sort of the shape of a fish, and you have there's just um, numerous of way, uh, innumerable ways of actually populating this font around any given object. You even have this uh, this step um, step text, which actually allows me to bring this down and nice. Make, That's a cool feature. Make the font to go around, go down the steps. We got a, we've done a lot with the text. What I'd like to see, Alex, uh, we're kind of running out of time. Let's go ahead and bring in a uh, graphic. Yeah. We figured for those of you moms, dads, stuff that who are those of you, number one, who are already in business, you're excited about this because this means you may be embroidering on backpacks and things like that. Uh, for those of you who have children, it means freedom. Um, All right, so in the kids are in the house. This is a, what, a JPEG you brought in? In this design, it's a JPEG. You see how dirty the image is here? This would be something that uh, most digitizers would have a nightmare with because one of the things you have to do with the graphic is you have to clean the graphic, okay? It's not a lot of information. You can see the different tones of red. The software comes with its own graphics tool uh, for editing graphics, and it's uh, one of them is called Color Reduction. Uh, when I go to Color Reduction, if I preview this design with up to 32 color selected, you can see all the different color greens, all the different color blues, the reds, the the the, the uh, natural tones like the blacks and the grays. That's how many colors it's actually seeing. Our image is actually black, blue, green, and red, and a white background, so it's five. So I can reduce this image down to five colors. And now I'm done. See, now we don't have all those different colors. We have a few there, but that's not going to make a big difference. So now what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to size my image. Customer wants this on a bag that's actually about uh, six and a half inches wide. So I'm going to go ahead and go six and a half inches. And now what we're going to do, we're going to convert the objects to stitches, okay? There's only four steps to using this software. Number one, you need a graphic. Number two, got to edit that graphic, which we already did. We cleaned it and we sized it. Step number three is actually convert all objects and every single one of these things is an object, two stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the red first. I'm going to do the apples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to embroidery. And I'm going to choose a pattern fill. And I'm going to choose my pattern fill. And maybe we'll do, uh, we'll just do this one here. PTM001. Looks pretty apple to me. Just the basic. Real quick, before you drive, I want to grab them out, open up the questions. There you go. All right, while Alan's doing that, I will look. Uh, you're moving a question around. I, mean, I think that's where we are. We have no knowledge whatsoever in embroidery. Will you provide training to get us started? Yes. Absolutely, Steve. You know, what you're seeing right here is what you would see in the training. Actually, you know, if you come into class, you're going to work on it. You'll spend a full day on software and training in class, plus a full day on hardware. And during the hardware class, you're actually going to learn how to embroider, how to hoop things, how to hoop hats up, how to hoop shirts up. And then when you come back and do the software day, what happens is you're actually doing the software and then you're loading the machine and sewing again. Yep. And if you'd like, you can even go and uh, in the meantime, check out the support site and go through the self-paced training yourself. Yes. I mean, uh, Steve, another good question. You do sublimation vinyl and rhinestone. Probably the thing that's of those that's going to be of the most usefulness to you is the vinyl. Because if you're doing designs now, you're doing designs in vectors. Mm -hmm. And while we're able to take this and convert it, 
if Alan had his choice between this being in a vector file and this being a, a crappy JPEG off the internet, 99 times out of 98, <laughs> he would choose a vector file. But I can, convert, scale. It a, I can convert it to a vector. He can vectorize this too, right. Uh, DeCastro, what, what is the price of the total package including the program? <laughs> uh, that You're looking at about 11.3 plus shipping. Bernardo, we'll give you a uh, we'll give you an actual quote. Yeah, we can have uh, we we actually save all these questions, right? And so I see your email there. You you will be a, certainly assigned to a an account manager if you have not already been, and they will get you out a quote. And we do recognize that we're running over time here. We're going to give it another uh, couple of minutes to look at this, what Alan's doing with the software, because that's important. So we'll probably go for about another 15 minutes. Sure. That's fine. And then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, it looks like most of you all are hanging out with us, so we're good with it. Okay, so, so now what I'm going to do is I, now that I've done the first two steps, I brought in the graphic, I added the graphic, now I need to convert everything to stitches. So I chose my pattern fill. I'm going to choose the color red here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to autocomplete. Now autocomplete gives me a magic wand where all I do is click on that apple, hit enter, and boom, there's the stitches from a JPEG. Click on this apple, boom, hit enter. Now what we'll do, we'll go ahead and we'll do a different pattern fill uh, for the green. So I'm going to choose something in the order of a zigzag pattern. Matter of fact, we'll do the word school with this, okay? So I'm going to go to select object. And oops, let me go back here. Go to embroidery. And uh, I'm going to choose a uniform area. I'm going to do a pattern fill. And I'm going to choose blue uh, as my color of choice. I'm going to click on the letter C, hit enter. Click on the H, hit enter. Click on the L, hit enter. And what I want to do is I want to border that with stitches, okay? You can see there's my there's my embroidery. So what I'm going to do is click on that. And uh, the border it couldn't be simple. You just click on border and you turn the border on. And there's the border stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the border stitch to a red. I'm going to change the width of the column stitch to maybe like a 12, half the, half the diameter. It's going to clean it up for me. There we go. I'm going to click on the H, and we are going to add a border to that one as well. And we can actually do that. Uh, we'll do the color red as well, pick up the color of the apple. And we had a blow up there. Well, it's just a, it's, the, 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 it's there just, it is. Well, it's you just, see what happens is when you – this is the challenge to a, a less than desirable – there we piece go. of art, you see? Alan cleaned it up a little bit there, and you can tighten these things up, right? So, obviously, the quality of the artwork that you bring in up front is going to help. There are tools in here to polish it up. However, you know, you're you're going to find that you're better off to spend time cleaning the artwork up, probably ahead of time, even. If you, if you like Steve was asking, he does sublimation. He does all these other types of, of uh, decoration. So, you're probably versed versed in Photoshop or Illustrator or CorelDRAW, so you bring your artwork in there, you tighten it up a little bit, get it in a good vector format, and you're going to great. See, Alan, and by the way, Alan's a master at this stuff. Yeah, what I, what I do, I got way too many nodes here. Yep. So, so by by uh, 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 deleting these nodes, I clean up the artwork just, just, um, just like that. You see what it's trying to do? Is it's actually trying to zig back on itself. That's right. But so we've taken basically a free piece of artwork, JPEG, yeah. JPEG off of the internet, and you can go in and you can fill it and continue to fill it. And you like to, you can outline it like Alan's done here. Now, Alan, I this is always a question for me. I wanted to take the welcome. Can I turn that into a satin stitch? Is there an easy way to sure, do that? Sure, absolutely. If I go to embroider and I choose turning area, and I'm going to choose the black. Of course, I'm going to use a I'll, I'll use a white thread. Click on click on it. Hit enter. There Bang. It is, right there you go. That's really cool. So you can take these. And now this so is. I'm going to multi-select now by just holding the bank. control button and clicking all these text here, and then convert them all at the same time. Miss, oh, you missed part of the K. Missed part of that K. Oh, where's the? Oh, yeah, you uh, got There was a two piece. It wasn't touching. There you go. Just hit enter. Boom! It converts it all. Perfect, man. Now that actually looks like a digitized font. That's right. We're that's gonna, powerful. We could do this here and do this here, and we can go back and change those colors just by selecting them. I'll select both of them. Come over here to my uh, object manager. And we will change the color right from here. It's the body, and we're going to change it to a green. Yeah. There you go. Oh. Now, keep in mind, it's question great here. that you do this, but you don't have to do this. A lot yeah. of beginning embroiderers do start out hiring out Sweet. their digitizing services. Uh, do you provide a tr trial version of the software to try? There actually is a base level package called uh, Universal that does have all the power. 
that you can you can download a free trial of that. It's like a 48 hour trial, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, is there help to set up a new business with pricing vendors, et cetera? Risa, we absolutely will provide you with that information on vendors and pricing. We can give you some guidelines, but pricing can be very regional. So part of what that's going to do is it's going to require that you take the time, maybe shop some of your competitors. We can give you some heads up. I'll tell you this up front because a lot of you all are new to this marketplace. And I will tell you the number one mistake I see people make when they start into this business is they fail to put value on their time. And let me explain to you something. It's one of those self-fulfilling fulfilling prophecies. When you fail to put value on your time, your customers will soon, soon learn to do the same thing. Right. And that they will start to take advantage of you for not charging enough. Yeah. You know, you, you're looking at making a pretty substantial investment and you're trying to feed your family in a lot of cases with this. Make sure you're charging fairly. I'm not trying to take advantage of people, but profit is not a dirty word, right? And we make money on the machines when we sell them to you. We expect you to make money on the output when you and sell it. And Risa, there, there's also a, one of the podcasts that we did is, is us talking for almost an hour about some of the basic mistakes that beginning embroiderers might make in starting and how to avoid them. Cool. And there we go. So now one of the other things we have with this software is uh, we have the ability to see what this looks like on a piece of fabric. Bingo. Uh, nice. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go to backgrounds. We have we have the background colors, of course, we have that. Uh, but we could also see it on a piece of uh, backing. Now, if your customer lives across the town and they could send you a, a you photograph go. of their fabric, yep. you can actually save it as a bitmap into the fabrics folder. And when you go to view and simulation, you have a preview, a swatch cutout of what, the, what, the, what it looks like. You can actually save this as a JPEG, all right? And actually take this JPEG file and send it to your customer and get them to sign off on it. Yes. Right? Which is awesome. Well, that concludes my so uh, my software demo. I mean, you can see it, it's it's very scalable. It does a lot of things. You can even upgrade the software to add rhinestones to it. So if I wanted to right. bling around the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, this image here, you can actually border it with rhinestones if you wanted to. You do have a scalability for different for different mixed media approaches. Awesome. And uh, you know, while we're on that, thank you, Alan. Thank you for your time. Alan is incredibly knowledgeable with the software, and trust me, that's about a tenth of the demo he could give you, which is which is crazy. It's, it's right. absolutely true, and, and it, it's not not saying anything about Alan. It's saying about how powerful the software is. Obviously, it says a lot about his skill set with it, and, and he brought up a very very valid question, right? I mentioned about about rhinestone, right? right. One of the things that we've been doing here in the last couple of months at Coldesi is is we're really we're dialing in. To, to our to our customers who are under you know are getting into this business how do I grow my business and there's a couple of things you can do real quickly right up front we're doing bundled packages with it I want to swing you around if you're hopefully nobody throws up right go ahead and we're gonna have oh that was a little question this is kind of the core of our cut and press system that you can add on the vinyl cutter you get packages of different types of heat applied vinyl this is some of the sparkle vinyl the glitter vinyl you can do multicolor. This is a job that they did at, at a two-color with white and red vinyl. Very, very minimal investment to add on to your system, so you can now pick up decorations for team sports and stuff like that. Secondarily, as Alan was talking about with the software to do the rhinestones, you can actually buy an add-on package to this that allows you to do a, a what we call a shake and bake or a, a brush, brush and bake, bake system where you actually are going to cut out templates to brush rhinestones into and also do those. And it's actually just an add-on package software-wise to the, the Stitch Era Liberty package and then the templating material to then run through this to do as well. So you, so could, really, be, you could be in, biz, in the custom t-shirt business, in the embroidery business, and in the rhinestone business for what, we're under, talking under $15,000? Yeah, 15, probably 16 delivery yeah. and everything. And we're talking about a ton of vinyl with that. That's like 50 yards of this right. vinyl. And the best software on the and market. And the best software on the market. And you're, you're doing all these things basically with the same software package. For, really for cool. much less than a Tajima. As you grow your, your more, <laughs> less than a Tajima, right? Yeah. Um, so that's another aspect of it that you can bring to the table. All right, so let's take about another minute or two. Any questions on stuff? We maybe not have not covered. I think we've done a pretty good job tonight of covering. I, I think there have been some great questions, and yep, I think we've answered most of them. I serious. I, there are no hands going up. That's great. Um, so, so how about let's 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 put it, put your hands up if you're ready to buy one. I like that because Mark gets paid on people that he thinks he's going <laughs> to buy. I get paid when you actually buy. <laughs> 
All right. I see you coming on hand. hand. There we go. We'll be at your house in just a Lynn few minutes. Says, Lynn says yes. Be right awesome. there. Okay. I've got your address. Great. In all seriousness, guys, we thank you all for taking the time today. Everybody who signed up for this for the webinar, we will have, you know, your account manager will have this information tomorrow morning. As soon as we close this out, it seems like somebody buying is on the way. Yeah. Um, it's it you know. Tomorrow by midday, you should have some some kind of contact, an email or a phone call from your account manager. If you haven't, just call in and say, hey, I watched the webinar last night. had a couple more questions. Most importantly, you know, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. Yep. Uh, but we do take all those, and uh, we'll be glad to help you out. We appreciate you guys, again, taking the time out of your schedule to be here and to go through this. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in some future uh, webinars. Yep. And if you, if you really try hard, you can join our groupies. There but certainly know. get up on the Facebook, the page. A lot of folks up there, a lot of information gets shared. Thanks for right. being here tonight. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.